So yeah, we published a paper in 2002, I believe it was, and, and it showed that um, it was, most of the paper was on our dry valley environment. So it showed that the dry valleys had been uh, cooling over a period of about 16 years. And then we uh, got together with a climatologist named John Walsh, who was on the paper as well, and looked at the continent, the whole continent, to see how it was changing. And, uh, you know, there's not many meteorological stations on Antarctica, and they're spread out. You know, it, um, it's actually kind of ridiculous that there's so little, the very important continent, we have so little meteorology on the continent. But what we did was we, we mapped out um, where it was cooling, where it was warming. And what had done, been done previously was there was just a sort of arithmetic average of all the stations. It turns out there's a lot of stations in the small peninsula area up by South America. And uh, it's actually warming quite a bit there. So all those stations reporting warming compared to the whole continent ended up giving an average that was a warming continent. But when you look at the spatial distribution of the warming, actually more area of the continent was cooling than warming over a long period of time. So we published that. Uh, and the response was pretty immediate. You know, it, it, Rush Limbaugh picked it up the next day on his show. Uh, Ann Coulter uh, talked about it. It's in that book um, um, by Michael Crichton, The State of Fear. One of our figures is in that book. And uh, they were basically saying, well, Rush Limbaugh said, you know, if, if, uh, if they don't understand Antarctica, if we don't understand Antarctica, how do we understand the rest of the world? It's like, this is... This is actually, our, it was saying that our study was actually disproving that global warming existed, which was really irresponsible. You know, it's, it's Antarctica. We weren't actually predicting the future. We were just talking about this trend in Antarctica. And actually what's happening now in Antarctica is it's sort of leveled off, and the, the models are showing that it will start to kick in once the ozone hole heals, that the ozone uh, hole is actually, you know, ozone is a greenhouse gas, so having a hole over Antarctica is calling, causing a cooling. And I won't get into the details, but as you fill in that hole, you start the, the continent to warm like the rest of the planet. So it's going to happen. You know, it's just this little hiccup in, in, in between. How did you respond to the misrepresentations? Um, for a while, I let it slide off me. And, uh, you know, uh, you start to read blogs and stuff like that, and, and uh, you see people uh, misrepresenting your work. And there was one quote in particular that really got me annoyed was, um, it was a Coeur d'Alene Press article and this guy misquoted me, it wasn't even a misquote, it was a made up quote that, that Peter Dorn, a climatologist from University of Illinois, says that global warming is not real, something along those lines, right? It, it was nothing I ever said. And so I started to wonder, how, well, how can I fight this? And, uh, you know, you can't do it in the scientific literature because those guys aren't reading the scientific literature. So. Um, one of the press people at my university convinced me to write an op-ed to the New York Times and uh, to my shock it got accepted and it was very well read. You know, that day, um, you know, they have the little sidebar there showing how, who's reading what article and what's the most popular article of the day and we were number two the whole day on the New York Times. There was an article about yoga mats that beat us. but. <laughs> so it got read and, and it's nice to have that article now I can point people to it, you know, they write me and, and say something about that paper, which is now, you know, almost 15 years old, I can point them to the New York Times article, this, is, this explains the whole thing and what it really means.